Hello again, everybody. Second Attack is here with the attack line for Wednesday, April 25th, 2012. And on this day, me and my fellow TLC fans are mourning the 10-year anniversary of the death of Lisa Lefty Lopez, who died on this day in a car wreck in Honduras in 2002. Now, I've been a diehard DLC fan. I had all the albums. I had ruined a TLC tip on cassette. Listen to that to hell. Like all the old stuff. Like the old Ain't Too Proud the Bag. Of course, What About Your Friends from that album. Baby, baby, baby. Of course, second album, Crazy Sexy Cool, had that on CD. Played that to hell. Creep, Waterfalls, the classic TLC with, the, of course, the famous line from. Left Eye, the famous rap of hers. Um, of course, when I special, I mentioned Creep already. And then, of course, the third album, Fan Mail, No Scrubs. I had that on CD, played that to hell. Of course, after her death, Lisa's death, they released Fan uh, 3D, which I played that to heck. And uh, probably my favorite albums, probably. Well, who the TLC would listen to that the most, but Queen Sexy's Cool was the best album. Looking back on it, I love Queen Sexy Cool. It's the biggest seller and the best. Um, I was hoping to see them, I never got to see them, uh, long story, but, uh, <laughs> wish I would have saw them with Left Eye, she was my favorite, she was one of my favorite members of the group, and, uh, listened to it like crazy, I had a TLC show, but I couldn't find it, it's somewhere, dug underneath, somewhere, but, uh, uh, oh, I beat Left Eye, we still miss you after 10 years, I still cannot believe it's been that long, still cannot believe it's been 10 years since her, Death and I knew this anniversary was coming. I think last year I knew it was coming and uh, then it was gonna hit me and uh, been jamming the GLC all day, morning her anniversary. So uh, RIP Left Eye, you all still missed after all these years. GLC forever. Twenty years of TLC too this year. So there you go. Now on the entertainment news, rest of the news of the day, starting with Billboard number ones. Well. Despite the fact we had a new number one movie this week, finally Hunger Games got beat by Think Like a Man. Billboard, we have Stills. Still number one album for the second week in a row. Mostly second week repeats. Lionel Richie still number one with Tuskegee. With number one, at, uh, I think like 100,000. And still number one single, Don't DA Somebody That I Used to Know. But a big debut from Maroon 5. Their new single, Payphone, debuts at number three on the Hot 100. I think it's number one on uh, digital songs, too. But still, also still number one, Blake Shelton's Drink Out It on the country singles chart as well. So we're going to the still number one albums and singles. Speaking of current, or this case, former number one singles, that leads me to fun. Of course, they are, of course, had the number one single, We Are Young, kicked off one week ago this week, but... On the anniversary when they got kicked off, they announced today that they'll be performing at the MTV Movie Awards, which will take place in June. They always like do that. They just reveal that fun will be doing the movie awards on, on June 3rd. I'm guessing it'll be a performance of We Are Young. And they also announced all the nominations. For the movie awards, which will take place on June 3rd, because the fans will vote, including first ever best music. So not only is the nominations announced today for the MTV Movie Awards, I'm guessing Twilight's going to get a lot of nominations. What else is new? They're probably going to win again. They win every fucking year. I'm sick of it. But, uh, there you go, MTV Movie will take place on June 3rd. They have the categories, but not the nominees yet. So we'll find it out soon enough. Now, on to our next topic, which is... People Magazine! They always have the sexiest man alive every year. And uh, in the background I hear Lady Gaga's telephone. That's my ringtone for my Texas. And of course, telephone features Beyonce, who people name today as the sexiest woman on the planet, or most beautiful woman. So that with the sexiest man alive, now it's time for the world's most beautiful woman. They revealed the cover today, 
which of course includes Beyonce being crowned that honor. She says to people, I feel more beautiful than I've ever felt because I've given birth. Of course, she gave birth to her baby Blue Ivy Julio this year back in January. I have never felt so connected, never felt like I had such a sense of purpose on this up. Although her album had failed, the oh, last album four was a disaster area. Um, she's like I said, she had a baby. I don't think she's touring, but uh, congrats to Beyonce for that honor, of most beautiful woman. She is very beautiful, and I think she deserves that honor of being crowned the most beautiful woman. There's a lot of beautiful women out there, a lot of them. Beyonce deserves to be one of at least named the prettiest, named the most beautiful. She always looks great. Every time I see a photo of her, makeup or not, she always looks good. She always looks great. I'm happy she got this award. Congrats to Beyonce for being named that. People's most beautiful woman. It'll be in newsstands this Friday. On the TV news, starting with Dance from the Stars. <laughs> I bought America and the judges. Bye, Gladys. She she left. Left on that midnight train to Georgia. Sorry, Gladys, but I think everyone knew she was going to be eliminated at the Motown. But Carrie Ananaba needs to get her brain straightened. Voting Gladys to stay instead of O'Shawn the dance duel? Come on. Like, and I said this on the attack line yesterday about O'Shawn getting less points than Gladys by Carrie Ann Arba and the bias, began, bias towards Gladys by Carrie Ann continued last night. Hopefully your brain gets retuned by next week. And have everyone lay off O'Shawn. Oh, well, hopefully O'Shawn does well and make judges Praise him instead of diss him like they did this week. So there you go. But I'm glad Megan got a wife by Gladys. All we're going to do now is get rid of Melissa Gilbert. And then we'll get the wheel competition going. <laughs> so I think we're getting rid of the baggage. You know, got rid of Sherry. I don't think she would have lasted any longer than she would have been. We got rid of Gavin. Got rid of Gladys. Man, it's a good season. Don't, don't bullshit yet. <laughs> Especially 229, uh, Catherine and uh, Julio. So there you go. By Melissa next week, I hope. So I hope America keeps it up. Keeps eliminating the baggage. Well, it's not America doing the work. The judges are eliminating the baggage. So I hope the judges... Well, America's putting the people in the top two dance duel. And the judges decide who they want to save from the dance duel. So, you know what I mean. Like, the judges in America chooses who goes home. So, Melissa, you're next. Now, I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the show. Today is the 10-year anniversary of the death of... Of Lisa Left Eye Lopez. But last night, Glee mourned a more recent death. Whitney Houston. And they did a lot of those songs. It, it wasn't as like a big blowout spectacular like the Madonna tribute or Britney tribute. There was people dressed up like her, but not like not paying attention to every detail like Madonna's episode or Britney, like I mentioned. Um, it was more about saying goodbye, like a lot of and this is like odd timing for this for these Glee episodes, specifically episodes about all the graduating seniors saying their goodbyes. Because this year is the five year anniversary of this is my five year class reunion. This is my five year of graduating high school. And I was a senior five years ago in high school and seeing all these seniors of Glee saying goodbye and we won't see each other gives me a grim reality check about how life has been after high school. So, yeah, I can kind of relate to these last couple of episodes of Gleam on any other episode because they talk about senior year. We also saw tension between Blaine and Kurt. Kurt met a guy going to New York. I think we all know, like, there was a lot of, like, tension towards Kurt because dad didn't want him to go. Blaine was mad at him, too. There was a little detention between Kurt and Blaine, and that was solved by the end of the episode when they finally expressed Throughout song, Blaine thought he was cheating, but Blaine's been upset at Kurt for talking about Nayad all the time, not about him. Kurt thought Blaine was just hating on Kurt or whatever, yada, yada, yada. Then we saw Quinn doing a relationship with that Christian guy, Joe, whatever his guy's name is, and uh, see what happens there with that relationship. And even uh, Mr. Shu didn't like the kids leaving either. But uh, there goes the OK episode of Glee with Houston. It was a decent tribute episode. Did a lot of our songs. Ending with the last song being My Love Is Your Love. And uh, I Want to Dance With Somebody. They kicked off with a slow version. Uh, How Will I Know was a slow version of it. Like they began with like Mercedes and Santana and 
Way Chill doing that solo version of that song to kick it off. So there you go. Next week's Glee, I'm seeing a preview. It'll be all about the Niada auditions for Way Chill and uh, Kurt and see if they make it to Niada or not. The head judge will be Whoopi Goldberg making a guest appearance on Glee. So there you go, Glee next week. There is no modern failing this week. There's a repeat this week. So there you go. See you all later. Thank you all for watching this attack line. With that in mind, you all been attacked by the news from Zach. Thank you very much. See you all later. Yeah.